about a couple of things you might want to get with your trike. First and foremost, and I can't show you this because I'm using it to uh, film this episode here, but you might want to get a GoPro Hero 8. So uh, if, uh, if you didn't film it on a GoPro, it didn't happen. So that's pretty important. I'm gonna show you how and where to attach the GoPro in a minute. But yeah, you gotta get a GoPro Hero 8. The best place to get a GoPro Hero 8 is Costco because you'll get this bag, you'll get an extra battery, you'll get 32 gigabytes of memory. You'll also get this handle, which is, uh, it's called the handle. It's a genuine GoPro accessory. This handle floats. So that's pretty cool. Uh, the buckle, I'm showing it with the buckle already on there. But this handle floats, it's also super comfortable. So this comes with it, you get an extra battery and you get 32 gigabytes of memory. Uh, another thing you might think about getting, I don't know about you, I live in the desert and the idea of changing a tire in 118 degree heat doesn't sound like a lot of fun to me. So if you get, this is a 16, fluid ounce bottle of slime. So this is enough for four tires. You only need three because it's a trike. You want to use four ounces per tire. There's a tool uh, here that's included in this piece. It's, it's actually on the underside of this. But there's a tool here that allows you to remove the Schrader valve. And once you remove the Schrader valve, you basically put this in and you put four ounces in each tire and then you inflate the tires again. The tires that come with the USX HD are Maxxis hookworms and they are capable of 110 PSI in each tire, which is fantastic because not only are they great thick tires with a lot of really thick rubber, which absorbs a lot of the shock and everything, but even though they're big thick tires, you can run them at 110 PSI, which eliminates almost all of the rolling resistance. And if you're a big guy, it, uh, you don't get that tire sag that you get um, typically if you're a heavy person and you're riding on uh, tires that have lower pressure. So it's, they're fantastic tires. I love them. And on my last trike, I replaced the tires with Maxxis hook, Hookworms on a TerraTrike Rover. And I rode and commuted to work uh, 15 miles each way, so 30 miles round trip. Uh, during the which I lost 120 pounds almost, a little under 120 pounds in a couple of years. And you can imagine the number of miles that I put on those tires. I never had to replace them. So that, that's fantastic. That's a lot of riding. I did have Kevlar strips in each tire and I did use uh, slime. This doesn't cost a lot of money. I got this at Walmart. So that's one thing. Uh, another thing you probably want is a bell. You don't need anything complicated. I used to use an air horn. Air horn will definitely get a driver's attention. Uh, but sometimes you can actually startle people. Uh, I used an air horn and just gave somebody a toot as I was coming up behind a runner. I almost caused him to jump down a ravine because I scared him so bad. So I decided I'm not gonna use the air horn anymore. You get a bell like this. It's just enough to kind of let somebody know, hey, look, I'm crossing the road, pay attention. And it doesn't cost a lot either. Uh, you want the, the brass ones, you want the ones that make a little bit of noise. Uh, this one's got a pretty decent sound to it and it doesn't cost a lot of money either. Now, I got the uh, Miracle uh, Mirror because I intended to put it on the USX HD, but I'm going to return this. Normally what you do with this is if you have kind of a soft grip, you cut into the grip and then you can put this in it and then you basically screw it in and it'll fit it. I found that the USX HD has a kind of a hard end cap. I'm not saying that I couldn't cut into it, but I am saying it'd be a little bit more of a project than a soft grip would be. 
The other thing is I found that the under seat steering was a little bit too close to my body to make a mirror practical. So in this case, I'm going to take this back. I'm probably going to get mirrors that go on the helmet. So this one's going back. Something else that I got, and I got this from TerraTrike for the previous TerraTrike that I owned. And it cost 24 bucks. Basically what it is, is it is every size of torque wrench you could possibly want. So there's six sizes here and these two. And then uh, these are for bolts. And there are three very common bike sizes. So you get nine tools for $24. And if you look at how it fits your hand, it's real easy to turn this way. You can also get into some very small corners with this. So there's not a lot that you can't fix with this small tool set. And as you can see, that's something you can definitely throw in a very small bag and take with you. So this is another thing I highly recommend you get. I did something else. I got these from Utah Trike. So one of the things when you're riding either a recumbent trike, tadpole style or delta style, and it's more true with the tadpoles than it is with the delta, is you really want to protect your heels from sliding off of the pedals. Because if your heels slide off the pedals and hit and touch the ground and you're really close to the ground, especially on a tadpole trike, you get something called trike suck. And it sucks. What will happen is, as soon as they touch the ground, and let's say you're going 20 miles an hour, it's going to yank your foot back at 20 miles an hour, and the trikes typically have a crossbar, like this, and it's going to basically suck your knee, you know, suck your leg back across that crossbar at 20 miles an hour, and pretty soon you might hear a snap, crackle, pop, and now you're in the ER with a broken leg. So you want something that if you're maybe not paying attention or you're being a little bit lazy and all of a sudden your, your heel kind of slides off the pedal, you don't want that to happen. A couple of ways to handle that. Using clip-in shoes is a good idea. That's what I used to use on my TerraTrack Rover. If you have been uncomfortable using clip-in shoes on a, on a bike, using them on a trike is a lot better because you don't have to worry about falling over. Once you clip in, I mean, you're just sitting there, right? This is a pedal that I got from Utah Trikes. As you can see, it's a little bit more casual. You can either use the, del the strap here or not. The strap can go over the shoe. So a couple things you can do. You can either strap it in and just don't use it. So, you know, put your foot on top of it and just take advantage of the heel. Or you can set it uh, kind of big and then just put your foot in it and just not have it be that tight. Or you can clamp it down on your foot and then it's like clipping in. So that's something, it has a weight on the bottom of it. These cost me $115. They're directional, of course, like any pedal, right and left. Um, and like I say, it's a little bit larger platform. One of the things that you'll find with pedals if you're going on long rides, 20, 30, 40 mile rides, is you know, wherever your foot is making contact with the pedal starts to get a little bit sore. With this, that won't happen quite as much. So in order to install this, you will need a pedal wrench, which you can get. I got this at Walmart. This is a 15 millimeter pedal wrench. It also includes a 16 millimeter here. Um, in any case, it's pretty standard size. Should fit just about any pedal. Um, you can look online for videos of how to install it. The installation instructions are on the back of this one. I'm not sure if I want to use these or not, which is why I haven't installed them on the bike yet. So, not sure about this one. Because I put my shoe in and I've got a wide shoe and it just barely fits in there. So again, I'm, I might be rethinking this one. In any case, so that's the pedals that I got. Finally, for any under seat steering, 
There, this is uh, basically a uh, light and computer mount for a recumbent bike. What you need to know is it is part number 95399 from uh, Sunlight. It is also UPC number 72774953. And it looks like this. I've put it together. It comes with a couple of alternate pieces here. Uh, fun fact, it does not come with instructions. Once again, I had to figure this one out. Um, so let me tell you where this goes. On the trike itself, Because you use underseat steering, you do not need to use the sleeve here that is in the stem. This is functional on the EZ3 USX HD. You could install an overhead steering if you wanted to. This fits in that stem like a stub steering wheel. And what makes it interesting is once it's in that stub steering wheel, when you turn the underseat steering left, this turns left. When you turn the underseat steering right, this turns right. So the idea is that I want to have a light on one side and a GoPro on the right. And as I turn, the light and the GoPro will both lean into the turn and look into the turn. Same thing as when I turn right. Now what's confusing about installing this, by the way, this wasn't part of this here when I first started. So the idea is that you want to uh, screw this part on, pick the size that matches the size of your sleeve. So you'll need to take a, a screwdriver and just lift off the cap that's on the stem here. Once you lift off the cap, you'll see an empty column. Uh, this is a sleeveless um, stem. And essentially, you'll want to have the blades here facing up. Now, the first thing that confused me is this is free spinning. So I thought, once I install this, what's to stop this from doing this? And the answer is, the way you install this is you pull the cap off, you put this in, you tap it in with the hammer, as you tap it in, these become part of the sleeve. The sleeve is the part that turns with the steering wheel. And this part also goes into the sleeve. Notice that it's in the shape of a wedge. It wedges itself into the actual sleeve. As it wedges itself into the sleeve, it will turn with the sleeve. So the fact that this turns with the uh, the fact that this spins freely doesn't matter because this is going to wedge itself into the sleeve itself. Then it turns with the sleeve. So this is an accessory mount. Uh, don't pay more than $24 for this. That's about what it's worth, $24. So this is a really neat accessory and I would argue that it's a must have for the EZ3 USX HD. And that's it for USXD accessories. And now I'm going to install those accessories. Um, so essentially we've got the front wheel here, but what I want you to notice, hang on, let you see But, so we've got this accessory mount here, but we've added a new accessory mount here that, as you can see, turns with the steering wheel. And so I've got the headlight there. I'm going to turn the headlight off. That way you can see it a little better. So, 
This is the accessory mount. It mounts into the uh, sleeve here. And you can see it's got the GoPro on there and it also has the headlamp itself. And then I have another accessory mount there that I can use. All right, here is a nighttime view. I've made some changes. Um, start here at the front wheel. You'll remember that we have an accessory mount here, but I've added a new one that also turns together with the front wheel. So you'll see I've got the headlight and the GoPro mounted to it. I'll give you a side view here. And I've got a cat eye Volt 700 light, and I've got the GoPro Hero 8 mounted to the accessory mount. Accessory mount turns with the steering wheel, so. Um, and I made an adjustment to the screen. The screen sits up a little taller now. And the screen is just above the bottom bracket, almost, maybe a few inches in front of it. So I still have a little bit more room to mount. And here is the display in nighttime mode, so you can actually read the display. Also installed a bell here. And on the back, so you see the battery underneath. I've got a, uh, a light here. I've got to charge this one. This one's dying, but uh, I've got a very bright rear light here. And then of course I still have the uh, flag. And then I've got the basket in the back. But, so that is, changes that I have made so far.